ladies and gentlemen, 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 gentlemen. We're on the boat. Last full day of hunting. Uh, we're gonna go chase that big buck we saw last night before we got short sanded by a Kodiak. Dylan's pretty stoked about that buck, so we are gonna hit the beach, ride it around first light, and uh, we're gonna hike right in, probably follow our tracks. Get up in there and uh, hopefully we find that buck. If not, um, we're gonna hunt that area, because it's a good area. If there is a deer lower, closer to the beach, I would love to take it, get it out whole, uh, to butcher it up, but we'll see what happens. We're gonna get back in the same zone, probably run the same program, and uh, hopefully that buck pops out. So stick around, we'll have a full action-packed episode, fingers crossed, and uh, welcome to episode whatever of the Our Alaska series. Honey hole. All right, baby. What's the, what's the plan for this team? Team numero around, uno. We're up a mountain today. Right. Want to see if we can get a mountain goat? Yep, Let's see what happens. So we got yesterday. mountain goat tag holder number one, mountain goat tag holder number two, pack, pack mule number one, mule. number two, number three with an alternate deer killer <laughs> ready to roll. G's taking the rifle. So these guys are going uh, on a cool adventure to chase mountain goats. We spotted a couple the other night and uh, as Alaskan residents, both Corey and Brian have tags. So. No pressure, Matt, but we need lots of footage. We're on it. Uh, predictions on how long it's going to take you guys to get up to the goats to be One able to shoot. One hour and 60 minutes. One hour and That's 60 two minutes. Hours. I, I like your math. Matthew, <coughs> prediction. Hours. Two hours? Gary? Two hours. Corey? Three hours. Whoa. <laughs> Brian? Uh, three and a half. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Peaks about 4,000 feet. Goats are about 1,700. Roughly? Depends on which map you use. <laughs> Inside joke. Between 1700 and 3000. <laughs> We're Anyways, say roughly 2000 I think foot elevation. elevation. These guys are going to be on a cool, cool adventure. Cool adventure. <laughs> Do not let go until I tell you I have it. I have it. Make them out. <laughs> Nice and cozy. We're ready to roll. All right. See you guys. See you boys. Good luck, guys. Have fun. Shoot that big buck. See you at noon. See you at noon. <laughs> Just made it to the beach. Uh, this is our last full day of deer hunting. We are uh, back same beach that we were at yesterday. We've got a different wind, but we're uh, kind of just banking on the fact that those deer are gonna be somewhere up around that 800 foot elevation mark. And so I think we're just gonna kind of hike up, uh, just getting to be first light. See if we can relocate either that nice buck we found yesterday or maybe a different one. Like we uh, kind of told you earlier, the other crew is uh, basically across the bay kind of see the skiff Jesus rolling back to the boat in the skiff main boats way over there and those mountain goats are somewhere up that peak so anyways uh that's gonna be the game plan we've got dylan as a shooter we got logan bear as a shooter i'm back on the camera again unless something changes we kick logan off the gun kick dylan off the gun shoot something just kidding guys that's not gonna happen <laughs> anyways we have had an absolutely marvelous time in the state of alaska uh could not recommend this trip this adventure enough maybe you and your friends want to get up here and try it out the the kodiak experience off the boat has just been so dang fun uh we got again this 
full day to hunt and then tomorrow morning we're gonna do like a half day maybe like maybe chase some fox that's kind of our number one goal possibly shoot some ducks and then head back and catch our flight and uh go back to reality but All anyways thanks for sticking with us so far uh let's go have some fun today we just got dropped off for a mountain goat hunt try to get back up to where me and brian saw him last night we'll have a little six hour head start though versus yesterday we'll go bushwhack for three hours and get up there made it past the first steep part only slipped and fell three times so that's three more than yesterday almost there I've never come back and bring spikes all right we made it back up to where we were yesterday and uh looks like we think there's a buck pushing a doe in this brush patch like 220 yards can't quite tell it's super thick but it looks like a buck's like running kind of back in there so dylan's gonna get set up just in case it's a good mature deer and they could easily pop up on this little open face and he'd be able to shoot right across this canyon basically it's where we set up yesterday the first time uh we just kind of got up here i seen like three or four deer on the way up but uh no sign of a mature buck just yet crossing our fingers that this is one of those good ones. Dylan can get a poke at him. About 300 foot down, 1400 to go. Getting eyes on the mountain goats. Um, trying to wait to see if they're trying to try to get a try to find the billy. Figure out what they are. Yeah. to head down. We were radioing each other to make sure it was safe to head down. Then we gotta go back up, 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 up. Be pretty sweet. Well, it's been an adventure. It's around 10 o'clock. So. Goats right there. Let's go get them. But we just bailed down off this steep stuff. Got a little bit of that video for you guys. Now, that was fun. Then we got here and now we have to probably get our feet wet across this creek. And then get back up there. It's gonna be awesome. The goats are right there. Brian, how you doing, buddy? Did you make it? We're ready across the creek. Let's see <laughs> if we find a spot. Gary, what do you got to say? That's pretty sketchy coming down. Not looking forward to the way up, but there's goats up there. <laughs> All right, so we are slowly packing up. We've been up here for probably about an hour and a half, maybe two hours. And we've seen a handful of does, definitely less activity than yesterday. Um, but we've probably seen 10, 12 deer, um, all does, no bucks yet. So we thought we saw a buck chasing a doe right across from us. So we decided to sit here and play it out. We're getting a little cold and a little antsy. So we're gonna pack up, head up over that, see what it looks like, and then see what this wind's gonna do. We'll probably try and cross this ravine just like that and hunt our way down the other side. There's some cottonwood patches down here um, where we keep seeing some deer in. Just haven't turned up a buck yet, so. It's also pretty cool. We've been watching three goats across the bay. The other group of guys are headed up after them, so hopefully we hear a shot here soon. Uh, they figured it was gonna take them three or four hours to get up there, so. Should be about this time where they're making their way pretty close to where they are. We're gonna go for a hike, see if we can't turn up a good buck or a buck or a fox, we'll see. We're gonna get our feet wet. Oh. 
Looks like we might have a potential spot to cross. <laughs> we gotta get down here. Pretty cool. So close, yeah, so far away from them. We got all day though. It's around 10 o'clock. We'll keep after them. All right. Need some makeshift waders, garbage bag, game bag over top. Give this a shot. Matt, explain to me what's going on here. <laughs> You're doing that Kodiak Creek crossing. Game bags and garbage bags. Tenth number one. Temp number one. Yeah, if Jeremiah Johnson, what? we got we got dry bag, garbage bag, and game bags on for traction. He can't hold those and freaking hold those up. <laughs> Pull him up. Pull him up, Matt. <laughs> Don't put a hole in those. Break that branch. So sketchy. You got this, B. Keep keep your left up. Pull your left up. <laughs> You're at one minute. Hypothermia setting in. Here goes Gary. Here goes Corey, river crossing number four. And I'm the only one left. All right, we made it across. It took about an hour. <laughs> Debating, deciding what to do for an hour. <laughs> then I remembered I had a some contractor bag, so, and we had a dry bag, so we made some waders. Goats are right there. Yep, we're at it. We're bedding down. Boogie up this hill. Brian's halfway up already. All right, let's go get him. Just glassed up a buck. Can't really tell what it is. It doesn't look like a giant by any means, but it's our last day. I know Logan would love to shoot another deer. I think Dylan would love to shoot another deer. We're gonna go see if we can get in position. Only like 250 from where he was, but he's down in like a big brush thicket right now. Let's see if we can get set up to when he pops out. We can get a better look at him. Super close. Probably two, three hundred yards.
again. Shoot him again. He is, he is, he's on it. What do you think, Brian? I don't know how we're gonna get off this, but we're gonna get off it. We got do, you. Um, do Josh and Corey wanna go up hey. over the top? What's up? He's walking right there. Thirty. Push yourself to the limit. Left at eight o'clock this morning. Yeah. Get some circles for a while. Figure out how to cross the creek down here. It's a little dirtier now. The one horn popped off and the other one broke. Hey, G Man, copy. Snuck up on this gal, she bedded down, took a nice little shot, and uh, hit her a couple times, and then she fell probably 800 feet, which you saw the video of. Broke off this horn. This horn got loose and pulled off. We still have it. But I guess that's a nice little nanny. Got a real nice rug there on there, so we'll get her cut up and out of here because we are on the side of a mountain still. Oh, that's just. Look how thick that is. Beautiful. A little dirty on the roll down, but that's all clean up. Make an awesome rug back at the house. Uh, and we'll have some uh, goat heart tonight. Yeah, what do you well, think? Well, well, we'll see what's left. <laughs> we'll cut her <laughs> we'll up see where and, the shots went. And eat, eat what we can. All right, Take well, we're going to get this cleaned down. up um, and get out of here. Time is of essence on mm -hmm. Kodiak when you're dealing with brown bears. So we'll show a couple clips cutting this up and packing it out. We got it done here on the last day. Exactly. Moving spots. Moving spots. We're going to try to cross this big wicked gorge we've been next to the uh, last couple of days. We want to hunt kind of back down to the beach through this big patch of cottonwoods that we've seen a bunch of deer in. So I don't know if we're going to be able to cross it, but we're going to attempt to cross it. It's slippery. Um, we heard some shooting also next to, well, I mean, across the bay. We blast over, we could see mountain goats still there. So I don't know what happened. I'm not sure if they missed or maybe they shot one that we could not see. There's two, sh three shots, I think. So excited to hear what took place there. They obviously made it up to the goats, which is pretty dang cool. So we're going to make a big loop or we're gonna go back the way that we've gone several times and just see if we can get back down to the beach and maybe get a deer for Dylan or Logan. Snow's starting to stick. Definitely warming up today. Look right through here. Yeah, and then up that. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. What do you think? Doable? I think it's doable. Definitely doable. Do we go up farther or just drop here? Looks Try to pretty, navigate it. Looks pretty decent. Yeah. Right here, right? There's deer tracks going down there, so they've obviously crossed. Kodiak ice crossing. Oh, jeez. Did you step there? Yes? Shh, nothing. Careful, that's cold. Slick. How was that, Bry? Uh, pays to be 155 pounds soaking wet, <laughs> but not not terrible actually. Successfully navigated the river. Now we just have to climb up out of this chute, and we got to be hunting. A little, a little update. Uh, we are trying to get down to the boat, pushing through these uh, thick alders, patches, and whatnot. And uh, just had a bucks bump out. We bumped a couple does, and then we just. 
bumped a buck who was like walking maybe like 65, 70 yards. Still let one rip um, real quick and not quite sure of the results yet. Take a quick look. Apologies for not getting that on camera, but uh, kind of happened quick. We got a real good blood trail though. And I didn't see the buck come out when I saw him run. Good job, dude. <laughs> oh boy. Another buck fights the dust. Dylan's tagged out. He tagged out in Kodiak. So we were just making our way kind of out. We're soaking wet and we bumped a doe. And all of a sudden, Brian was right in front of me and he said, buck. So I grabbed my rifle off my pack super quick and threw it up. Brian stopped him, it all happened super quick. Didn't even really see how big he was. And he was probably what, 50 yards through the trees. Yep. Just kind of threw my rifle up and shot. And at first, we didn't know if we even hit him or not he took off didn't hear a whop or anything but great wow. blood chilling he is he is we said this before but can't really savor these moments because we are in kodiak country to make things even more is we saw the bear heading this way yesterday if you watch if you guys watched yesterday's video big boar um, kind of fed into this canyon or hunted into this canyon. Um, he could be higher than us. We crossed his tracks today. Big old dinner plate tracks and we're kind of in a thicket. So these guys are rushing to get their knives in the bag and I'll keep watch with my pistol. Our wind is kind of going towards the beach, I believe, but we are kind of in a bowl area. And so we just want to get this guy broken down as fast as possible just to avoid all problems. Um, so I'll keep a watch. Hopefully we can get this guy broken down fast into the boat. But Dylan's tagged out in Kodiak, so that's freaking awesome. All right, so we are, we're probably about 300 feet up from the, the ocean on the pack out. And we've got probably another hour left of daylight. Yeah. So is that fox time? Yeah, we'll see if we can find we a Might fox. get back and go see if we can find a fox or something. After I short-standed Logan on this buck, we'll go redemption with the fox. Buggy? I'm so filled with anger, I don't even want to talk right now. <laughs> Dylan had the shot. I was clean up though. 50 yards. It was a fun moment. A lot of excitement. That was fun. We're Officially uh, my, my smallest buck ever, but definitely not the most, not the easiest buck. So it's pretty awesome. Yeah. And after the other night, we had a couple on the, uh, the grill and they're definitely one of the tastiest game animals I've ever had. So not bummed about bringing some more meat home. Blue Hogan, lead us home, brother. Follow me. Tomorrow uh, we'll finish this trip off 
with a blend of fox and duck in the morning, and we hit the bay, hop on a plane, and we're back to civilization. I hope you guys have enjoyed this series so far. I know Logan and I feel super fortunate to have been able to be a part of this. We didn't know all the guys coming on to it, but walking away, we're gonna have a bunch of lifelong buddies. And uh, if, uh, if we ever have a chance to come back to Kodiak and get on this beautiful boat, Captain G, Deckmate, Rando, uh, I know we would 100% do it again. So uh, have a great night. We will see you in the morning to wrap this thing all together. This 10 or so days of Alaska adventure is culminating tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Ah, good morning, guys. It's the last day on the boat. Switching it up. Me, Matthew, Josh. We're gonna go try to shoot some ducks. Uh, the duck choice, Matthew. Harlequins. Harlequins. Yes, that's what we're trying to get for. Trying to get a couple Josh, have you ever killed a harlequin? I've killed two. Two. Matt, have you ever killed one? No. I have never even seen one. So this is gonna be a fun morning. Uh, quick little hunt, and then it's really transportation day. We're gonna hop on a bunch of flights, organize a bunch of gear, and get back to Kodiak City. Yeah. So we'll see if we get any ducks. Um, I'm gonna use the GoPro here. Sorry guys, it's a little dirty. And uh, we'll get our day going. I think Logie Bear and Dylan are gonna try to shoot a fox this morning. Welcome back to the boat. You want the small weight or? Yeah, small weight's perfect. Legal shooting light is at 8.02. So last is kind of interesting uh, for like big game and stuff. If you can still see, uh, you're able to shoot with no help from any kind of illuminated reticle or lights or anything like that but when it comes to waterfowl there is your traditional shooting hours Perfect. so 802 is our time and just get these decoys strung out just ready to float now we're ready do you want to, you don't want another anchor yeah you got the guns there josh matt scale 110 how excited are you right now 11 11. yeah that's sweet got the decoy set all five of them harlequin are pretty uh non-social birds except for their little crew that they're hanging out with lots of pairs threes and fours should come in or fly by this point here so. any other tips from harlequin hunting mm, kind of got to be where they want to be they like to come back to their home body they're where they've been hanging out so if you're there they'll come right in if you're at a spot where they don't want to be you might get some pass shooting but it's gonna be hard to get them decoying G said you're allowed four sea ducks per year, right? Yeah, so for for, either, for any species, you really, yeah, you're only allowed four sea ducks per year as a non-resident, which is good, which is a good thing. It's a really good thing, honestly. Um, it keeps keeps anyone from over harvesting, it makes yeah. you really focus on drakes, you know, and it allows, you know, the next group of people to come back and have, you know, that kind of successful, prolific, you know, waterfowling, Absolutely. which is kind of awesome. Let's do it. Let's get Matt a, a mounter. <laughs> Let's that, do it. That has a taxidermy he needs to <laughs> check off the box. Yeah. <laughs> Eight o'clock, we are uh, T minus two minutes from shooting light. Although I gotta tell you, it's not super light. So there's our string of decoys right there. I'm just on this rocky point filled with barnacles. Matt's right to my right. And then Josh is over a little bit further out. Pretty beautiful day. Yesterday it rained in Kodiak. Pretty dang nice out. Okay, we got one down. Just a single drake came into the decoys. Josh was able to get him. Just floating out there. We're uh, gonna wait and see if another maybe volley of ducks come in before we go retrieve it in the skiff. So off to a pretty good start. Hey, so fully, mat fully matured. Wow, so pretty. Pinned out, yeah, they're gorgeous. They're absolutely gorgeous. Damn, You see why like, get one beautiful bird. Yeah. You know, this is just, so damn pretty. Just got my first Harlequin. Kind of a lot going on, but uh, there's a boat over there that I think must have kicked up some birds or something. A pair came right into the decoys. Uh, I didn't want to have to shoot it out of the water, but at the same time, stoned it and um, that's the goal, is you want to shoot them and get them knocked down because they have the ability to dive and they'll go under for a long period of time. So I got one down. I had another set come in, but I was waiting to see if Matt was going to try to slide over here, so I just passed him. Anyways, new experiences in Kodiak, super fun. And uh, we got two Harleys down. Looks to be a really pretty Drake. And uh, we'll see what the rest of the morning brings. I think Matt's going to come back, maybe. He's going out there on that point.
We got it. That happened fast. <laughs> Drake Harlequin. Oh man. <laughs> Josh got his first thing this morning. Here comes another one. Help. Get ready. Nice. Good job, Matt. We got two down. Three, four. About a limit. I was just saying. <laughs> Josh got his first thing this morning. Garrett went to run Josh back to the boat to start packing. I snuck around here, and then it was like Harlequin City. A whole bunch came in for Brian right in the decoys here. He's shooting, shot one, and I'm running back <laughs> as I can to get to the decoys. Basically, Super as soon as I morning. got here, we got two. So got three, three down, waiting for the skiff ride. Well, quick and dirty, guys. Uh, took about an hour for Harlequin. Matt was able to get two. I got one. Josh got one, and uh, probably could have shot quite a few more, but one is cool for me. It's beautiful drakes. Some fun new experiences. Now we uh, are headed back to the boat to go get organized. Kind of a lot of stuff going on with gear and meat and cape and antlers and things like that. So I'm gonna go take care of that before we head back in to the harbor and uh, get up on out of here. Head back into Kodiak City. Well, we're wrapping it up. Literally, quite literally. Uh, last day in Kodiak, Brian and the boys went out and killed some harlequins this morning. And uh, we froze all our deer meat, fox pelts. So now we're putting them in these refrigerated freezer boxes. They're frozen solid, but we're labeling all our stuff, getting them in our own boxes. And uh, this stuff's gonna fly home with us. We got all our deer meat in here and uh, fox pelts. Pretty rad little process. We're uh, gonna fly out to Kodiak City tonight from Larson Bay and uh, we're gonna stay tonight and then travel we'll end up in Utah tomorrow so this is the or whenever this is the gonna be the last episode for you guys um, thank you guys for watching it's been a crazy awesome adventure uh, if you're ever gonna do it Brian give him the credentials of who to hit up guys thanks for watching our first Alaskan adventure I hope it's the first of many we had an amazing time with great people we're gonna leave you a, a gear list things that we learned on this trip so if you had questions about maybe the rifle case cover, what type of stuff to bring, logistics, uh, transporter information, anything Lights. that we've learned on this trip, we're gonna try to put together, maybe have a downloadable spreadsheet or something. I think you can do that on YouTube. We'll figure something out, but it's overwhelming at first, but absolutely worth the time and the effort and the savings to get out here and do this Kodiak black tail hunt with the potential fox and duck. You can fish. fish. So many great things. Anyways, thank you guys for watching the Alaska series. I don't know what hunt's coming up next, but it's probably not going to be as cool as this one. <laughs> See you guys. See ya. All right, you guys, and just like that, back to civilization. From Kodiak, we drove the boat back to Larson Bay, flew out from Larson Bay in the same small 208 Cessna that we flew into. Landed in Kodiak City, stayed at the Best Western Kodiak, which by the way is a fantastic hotel if you are gonna do this trip. Make sure to stay at the Best Western Kodiak. Next day woke up, flew out from there to Anchorage and then from Anchorage to home. So just wanted to tell you guys, thank you so much for sticking around with this series. It's been fantastic putting all these videos together and getting to relive the experience that was our very first time in Alaska. So we're already kind of talking about making plans for doing Alaska next year and uh, talking with Brian. I think we're gonna do a podcast possibly with Garrett, the driver of the charter boat, Corey, the driver of the fishing boat, the dudes from Onyx, and uh, we're gonna answer your guys' questions. So if you have any questions whatsoever, leave them in the comments below, whether it be about the fishing, the logistics, the gear we brought, cost, travel, anything like that, leave your questions in the comment section below and uh, we'll be sure to answer them and inform you guys. But thanks for watching. It's been a great series, super fun to put together and reading the comments so far, it seems like you guys really enjoyed it. So that's our Alaska series. Um, we're gonna head straight into Arizona coos deer. And uh, once again, thanks for watching guys. We'll see ya.